Welcome to Electron Online. And in order to understand Lewis structures better, and of course, understanding how bonds are formed between atoms to form molecules, we have to understand a, a number of rules. And one of the rules we need to understand is what we call the octet rule. What is the octet rule? Well, I have written up here, it says the tendency for an atom to be surrounded by eight valence electrons to forming bonds. So one of the key ways in which we can figure out how bonds are formed is to realize that almost every atom wants to have eight valence electrons around them. Of course, there's some exceptions. For example, the hydrogen atom doesn't fall in that category. It only has a maximum of two valence electrons. Uh, there's another exception. In some cases, there's an odd number of valence electrons. For example, the atom nitrogen only has five valence electrons. And in some bonding, it cannot have eight electrons around the nucleus. So therefore, it violates that octet rule. And then there are some bonds with period three and period four atoms where you will not find that the octet rule is, uh, is uphold, uh, upheld. But other than that, it's a good rule to follow, and in most cases, it's a very helpful rule to follow. So let's take a look at some of these molecules right here. Let's say we have hydrogen gas, which is a diatomic molecule. Well, it forms a single bond between the hydrogens like this, and in this case, you can say that half the time, this hydrogen will have two valence electrons, and half the time, this hydrogen will have two valence electrons. So sometimes we draw little circles around it to indicate that part of the time this hydrogen will have both electrons, part of the time this hydrogen will have both electrons. So half the time each hydrogen is satisfied with its two valence electrons. So it has two valence electrons here and two valence electrons there. Another way that I like to write to indicate that yes, that rule is at least upheld. So it's not an octet rule. It has two valence electrons there. But in case of chlorine, when chlorine forms chlorine gas, uh, since it starts out with seven valence electrons each, they just need a single bond right, like that, and then it has six extra electrons like this on each chlorine. And you can then see that this chlorine atom, part of the time, will have eight valence electrons. This chlorine atom will have eight valence electrons. And so in this case, the octet rule is indeed upheld. And that's one nice way to figure out that there's only a single bond between them and therefore it follows the octet rule. When we have carbon dioxide, there it's a little bit different since oxygen comes in with only six valence electrons and carbon only has four valence electrons. It necessitates that there's a double bond here and a double bond there, leaving four extra electrons on each oxygen on each side of the molecule does happen to be a linear molecule, and now you can see that by doing this, remember each line represents a bond with two electrons, then you can see that this oxygen part of the time has eight valence electrons, this carbon part of the time has eight valence electrons, and this oxygen part of the time has eight valence electrons. So we can write it like this. Notice that again, the octet rule is followed. Coming here to the nitrogen uh, bond between nit two nitrogen atoms, in that case there's a need for three bonds, so it's a triple bond between them, which leaves each nitrogen with just, let's see here, uh, one, two that works and one, two that works. So notice that if you take half of each bond, so that's one electron each, plus these two, that means five electrons are still belonging to each nitrogen, each nitrogen uses three of those five electrons to form a bond between one another, but you can see then that part of the time this nitrogen has eight valence electrons, part of the time this nitrogen has eight valence electrons, and again, by making a triple bond between the nitrogens, the octet rule is upheld. All right, coming over here with hydrogen and fluoride. Now, obviously, whenever you have hydrogen, the octet rule cannot be upheld by hydrogen. It only can have two valence electrons, but in this case, it'll be a, a single bond Fluorine came in with seven electrons, so it'll have six additional electrons. Notice that fluorine follows the octet rule and has eight electrons this way, and then hydrogen will have two electrons um, part of the time at least in forming a bond this way. Okay, with the oxygen, oxygen gas forms a diatomic uh, oxygen molecule. It will have a, tr a double bond in this case because it came in with six valence electrons, which leaves four electrons on each oxygen. Notice when you draw the circle here, you can see that it has eight valence electrons part of time, and this has eight valence electrons part of time. Again, the octet rule is followed. Okay, with uh, what we call ethylene. Ah, I just forgot what that molecule is called. There's two carbons with two hydrogens on each. That's called ethylene. Um, in order to form the octet rule between the carbon 
and also knowing that it can form a single bond with the hydrogens like here. Notice that we already have four electrons. We need two, four more electrons to follow the octet rule, which means you need to have a double bond. In this case, you can draw a circle around this and realizing, well, it's not quite a circle, but good enough. Notice it. this accounts for eight electrons around this carbon for part of the time and eight electrons around this carbon part of the time. And of course, each of the hydrogen will have two electrons part of the time. So that's two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, and two electrons. Notice this is due to the sharing, of course, between the electrons. And again, between the carbons, we realize we have to have a double bond in order to have the octet rule follow. And finally, when we get to acetylene, this is acetylene. Notice you can only have a single bond there. And carbon needs to have a total of eight valence electrons around it if it's going to follow the octet rule, which means it needs to have a triple bond over here. That means each carbon that came in with four electrons, they're still using four electrons, sharing those four electrons. Again, that means part of the time this carbon will have eight, part of the time this carbon will have eight, and of course hydrogen here has two, hydrogen here has two, so that's two electrons, two electrons for the hydrogens, and eight electrons, oop, that's not a very good looking eight, Wrong angle to write on, eight electrons, eight electrons, like that. And notice now, uh, by doing this, by using this kind of technique, quite often it helps you figure out how the molecules are bonded together. If we just consider that, atoms will do their best to end up with eight valence electrons when they, can, when they finish bonding with other atoms like that. So it's a really good handy rule to help you figure out the bonding structure between atoms. That's what you call the octet rule.